Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankly FM84 and a big thank you for joining me on another episode of Bello Calcio. Currently out in Japan managing Shonan Balmare and we are having a blast of a time. We are currently sat top of the J-League by seven points. We have qualified for the Champions League knockout phase and we are still in every cup competition that we are playing in. Two, we have an unbeaten, well, we had an unbeaten streak until yesterday's episode of something like 19, 18 games in the J-League, something like 26 overall in cup competitions and everything else as well. But our bubble was firmly burst yesterday as we lost in the game against Yokohama. But we're not going to dwell on that. We are going to be moving straight on forwards. We haven't played any games. Nothing really of note to happen apart from one thing that is going to be interesting. And I'm going to show you this because... I don't know whether this is a good plan or a bad plan or whether it's something that is going to blow up in my face. But we have had a number of players come available. Obviously, in England, we're in Japan. In England, it's gone past the contract expiration date. So a lot of players have become available. and We have agreed deals with players like Eric Bugerin, who is a former Wolverhampton Wanderers player. We have... A deal with Faizu Sangare. He is also a former Wolverhampton Wanderers player. Tristan Abeldeen Goodridge. He is a former Aston Villa player. We have a few other players that are still waiting on those kinds of deals. We've got Bradley Ryan. He is a former Chelsea player. We have Charlie Wellens. He is a former Manchester United player, as you can see by his picture. We have deals in place for Tim Akinola. He is a former Arsenal player. Uh, Xavier Simons is still considering a contract, but obviously former Chelsea player there. We have also got quite a few deals in place for Lucas Stevenson, ex-Liverpool player. We have Joao Lopez former Arsenal player. We have Bjorn Hardley, who is considering a contract, but I think he's one of the players that he's probably wanted by quite a lot of teams, and I think he will go elsewhere. Patrick Zito, he is a former Aston Villa player too. Josh Brooking is coming in on free transfer. He is a former Chelsea player. We have Dermot Mee coming in. He is a former... Manchester United player. So you get the gist. Basically what we've done is we've gone through the list of released players. We have tried to snap up some of the players that are of the age where you can just offer them minimum contracts. 250s, 275s per week. We're going to bring them all in, put them in the under 21 squad. And then sift through which ones are worth keeping and which ones are worth moving on. It's hopefully low risk, high reward. Because if we can get them to a standard of where they're playing first team football... We might be able to bring them in for, say, six months and then move them straight on in the next transfer window. And every single penny that comes in then is just profit from the sales. And I think in the long term, it probably is a good plan. In the short term, it means we get to see which players out of that release list are players that are going to benefit us. Obviously, all of them are foreign players in Japan, so all of them need work permits, which means we can't have them all in the team at the same time. I also am not sure whether the board will just go, what are you doing, you crazy idiot? Signing all these foreign players, you can't play them all. Will they cancel some of the deals? I'm not too sure. The other thing we have done is there are quite a few players in there, some 15, 16-year-olds that are coming through the Japanese prefecture um, school system. Went through, had a little look, scouted a few players and have decided to pick some of them up, but nothing really of note in there. So that is the strategy we are going to go for. It's a little bit of a mad one, but if it means that we can become a little bit more financially sound by doing that it's probably a risk worth taking but anyway you're not here to hear about strategies for me making money for next season because trust me next season is going to be an absolute mashup we are releasing something like six or seven first team players so i'm going to need players to come in and replace them but that is further on down the path and today we have a game against okinawa sv so let's show you the lineup that we're going to put out in the emperor's cup So after yesterday's disappointing defeat to Yokohama, 
we are looking to get back into winning ways pretty quickly. And I think this Emperor's Cup game is the perfect way to try and bounce straight back. So we are going to be fielding the following 11 to face off against Okinawa SV. So we've got Gracker in goal, Takahashi, Ono, Oiwa and Okamoto. We've got Mayuki, Barada and Nago, and Elianusi, Machida and new boy Maxwell, who I think I forgot to actually announce. Um, so Maxwell has come in. He is 23 years old, so he has a building block, really. He has acceleration of 14, pace of 13, natural fitness of 15, finishing of 14. And really, I think he's a long-term successor to Wellington, who is going to be leaving at the end of the season. Plays a similar position, has the similar type of build. The only thing he doesn't have, really, is Wellington's strength. So he only has three for strength. So that might be a little bit disappointing if he gets bustled off of the ball by defenders. But I think he's got everything that we are looking for, really, in a player that is going to come in and score some goals. So fingers crossed we carry on creating and carry on getting wins. Let's see what happens as we face off against Okinawa SV. Here we go then. So our debut in the Emperor's Cup. Uh, another cup competition in Japan. I lost my train of thought completely there. I was looking at Okinawa's lineup. They're going with the basic 4-4-2. Yeah, so another cup competition in Japan is the Emperor's Cup. It holds a lot of prestige and it is a cup that I know Shonan have won in recent memory. So, fingers crossed we can have another good run at it in the game too. And we seem to have stayed up brightly. We've had three shots, four shots now already, but nothing on target and it seems Okinawa are going to have the first attack of the game that is on camera as Kitano plays the ball inside knocks it forward to Oshiro and Yuto Oshiro has scored so a little bit susceptible to a 4-4-2 it seems as they really that was quite simple he was uh, allowed to just turn in off of the wing lay it into Kitano's path he turns his man as well and then just rolls it into the path of the forward who takes a touch and then hits it side-footed past Thierry Greca. So a disappointing start here. And we're looking to get back to winning ways. This is not how we do it. Although it is a typical football manager game, isn't it? When your opposition have one shot and score one goal. It wouldn't surprise me if they have a second shot here and score another. Instead, Barada is on the prowl. He's nicked the ball away. And the ball over the top, if he's timed it right to Machida, he's put him in. And Machida hits the inside of the post with the first shot. And instead of trying to square it, Hits the second shot straight at the defender. Let's see what he can do here. So he's brought down. So we're going to have a free kick high up the pitch if the highlight continues. Barada swings it to the back post. Oiva with a header. It looked like he hit Maxwell on the way out. And uh, the ball was going as far as the halfway line. And that is pretty much dead. But it means that we are having attacks at least. And something of substance there. But again, it is Okinawa that are on the ball. And... The highlight is building. It's coming down their left, yeah, their left hand side, and they are building up quite nicely. Let's see if we can just nick the ball again like we did last time. They pulled it inside and playing it around pretty well. As the attacker is in again, Oshiro, and this time Thierry Greco has managed to deal with it. Just notice that Ono has an injury, so we're not taking any risks in this game. Centre backs. And then we don't have one on the bench. Luckily for us, we can pull Okamoto into the middle. And then we will bring our Hatter out right back. So a little bit hodgepodge, but we plug the gap and means we don't have to have an injured old player running around the pitch. But this is not going to plan at all. We've had 13 shots, four of which have been on target. I thought that Maxwell might have come in and... Kind of G'd us up a little bit, but instead it's same old, same old. 15 chances, 4 on target, XG of 1.68. Not really what we're looking for in this game. And are we all of a sudden going to be susceptible to back-to-back -back losses? As Takahashi takes the throw in, Barada plays it back to him. Elianus is on the ball out wide. It's crossed into the box. The, the header there was weird, and it went straight to Elianus. who crosses in, and Maxwell scores on his debut. Just as we wanted. This is the reason we signed him. 23 years of age. With the stats looking the way they are. I think he's going to be a good J-League player. And as this comes across. Elianusi is just going to smash it back into the path of Maxwell. A nice side-footed finish for his first goal. In green and blue off Shonan. 
Balmare and strafe and kick off. Something else is going to happen, so let's see what happens here. Ito is on the ball. Are we going to turn this around quickly, or are they going to get straight back in front? 47 minutes on the clock, so nobody really has settled in from their half-time break and all action as we have stolen the ball, and Maxwell is set free again. He's in on goal, and Maxwell smashes that into the back of the net. Just as we thought, he's going to be lethal in front of goal if he gets the right service. And that ball was pinpoint accurate as it gets stolen in the middle of the field. Barada, ball over the top, it's into his path, he takes a touch and then steadies himself before smashing it right footed in off the underside of the bar. As Maxwell gives us a 2 1 lead. So, 50 minutes on the clock and this game has been frantic already. We've had to make that one substitution in the first half as well, but I think we are looking good here. We have had 19 shots with only six of them on target. And I think what we're going to do here is push Maxwell out wide and bring Ishihara on up front. Just to see if we can't get a fresh pair of legs up front and seal the deal. As... Uh, Okinawa are trying to play out from the back. They've lumped the ball forwards and it's going to be picked up by Hata. Oiwa plays it into Okamoto. And when Barada gets on the ball, things start to happen. It's exactly what happened there as he plays it into Maxwell. Hata is now squaring up to his man. Cuts it back for Nago. What's he going to do with it? Plays it back to Hata. And the shot is straight at the goalkeeper. So Harada with a decent save there. So, 70 minutes, 20 left in the game. And we are letting these into the game because they keep having the ball and they keep, they're the ones that keep building attacks. We're the ones that just keep picking it off in and around the centre circle. And again, that's happened as Hatter runs into the box. Is he going to cut this one back? He tries to cross it in. It gets cut out by Kitano. And then, unfortunately for Okinawa, they just lump it forwards and the header comes to nothing. Miyuki now gets the ball in the middle with Okamoto. Plays it to Barada. Ball inside to Takahashi. See what he can do with it. Maxwell is on a hat-trick if he can find him. Instead, it's Nago with the header. And that is the game. Shintaro Nago, 71 minutes on the clock. 3-1. And I really think now that this is going to be us through into the next round. I'm also going to be cheeky enough to stop the highlight for a second. As I'm going to take Barada off. And bring Yamada on. And that is all of our substitutions done as well. So we are going to ride this one through now. 19 minutes left on the clock. They go with a great header there. Goalkeeper's not getting near that at all. And he runs off to take the plaudits. And rightly so, it was a great finish. And we are on the attack again now. So it just seems like we were winding up to this finish. As Yamada gets the ball and he smashed it into the bottom corner. And that is 4-1. And all of a sudden, we have gone from 1-0 down to 4-1 up. And this is how we like to play football. After yesterday's disappointing defeat, I thought, uh-oh, a 1-0 early on. Is it going to be heads dropped and we don't get back into this? No, it's not. We are going to come out fighting and we are going to be winning this game in the Emperor's Cup. So, 24 shots, 9 on target. Definitely something that needs addressing in the summer is the finishing. Although I suppose 4 goals from 9 shots on target isn't that bad of a return. Could have got better there with the free kick that was crossed in. Yamada's going to pick the ball up here. But uh, I think Maxwell definitely is going to help. And then we need to probably replace Elianusi as well. Avla, I think, is going to get better as the game goes along. Ooh, that was an unlucky shot from outside the box there. Avla is a player who's going to get better as time goes along, and so is Nicholas. And I think, uh-oh, this is why you shouldn't make substitutions all the time. Let's see, can we make another one? Of course we can't. We can't make any more substitutions. So I am going to pull Elianusi to right back. I know this is a little bit mad, but uh, we'll try and assure up the defence and see the game out. And definitely... Definitely never learn the lesson of making all your substitutions with 20 minutes to go, do I? Do it all the time. And luckily for us, we're on the attack anyway. She might have gets the ball to Miyuki, and he definitely now has killed the game off. It's 5 1 with that stunning finish into the top corner. Goes and does his nice little gamble roll in the corner. And we have got three minutes, two minutes left to kill the game out. Hopefully, play just slows down now. Nothing else happens. 
but let's revel in this goal as Miyuki smashes it into the top corner. Goalkeeper is never getting near that. And that is a perfect finish to a game that we really needed to bounce back in. And that is exactly what we have done. And yeah, luckily for us, all the way through to full time. No need to uh, really go over this one. We've just seen it all play out in front of our eyes. Down early on, had 10 shots on target from 27 shots. Maxwell gets two goals on his debut. We have Yamada, Nago, Miyuki all chipping in as well. And we are fully happy with that result. So let's pass on through the dressing room, go through the media page. Let's have a little look at the schedule and see where we are going to be coming back. So we are into the business end of the season. And as you can see now, we are pretty much on the running as we are working towards November. So we are currently in July. There are four months left in the season and we have a game runner games here that is Kashiwa Raisol, Fissel Kobe, Kashima Antlers. We have Renofa Yamaguchi in the Emperor Cup, Emperor's Cup third round. And then we also have Beijing Guan 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 in the AFC Champions League second round. So I am thinking that we might just do Sam Fries, Hiroshima on the 19th, followed by Beijing in the Champions League on the 30th of August. And that breaks us up nicely there to probably have one game here to see when we are going to wrap the title up, it seems. And we're going to try and guess that for the running. But I'm going to leave it here. And as always, if you're at this point of the video, you're still watching, you've enjoyed today's episode, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Helps the channel so much. I appreciate every single person that takes their time to do that to help the channel. The growth that has come across the past year has been absolutely brilliant and I cannot thank you all enough for doing that. But for this one, I'm going to leave it there and you will see us tomorrow when we take on Sam Fries Hiroshima in the J-League.